church today. Let's all stand together. snowy day out, but I am glad to be gathered with you. Uh, welcome to those that are here and those that are watching online and those that that will watch sometime in the future, whether that be this afternoon or, or sometime this week on the television. We are in our second week of Lent now, uh, and so with that we are we are glad to have a place that we can gather together as we journey through um, our fast and our feast and, and to have a place to worship. Uh, this morning, uh, a few announcements before we begin. Uh, during the Lenten season, we've been partnering with the United Methodist Churches uh, in this area. Um, this past week, I preached over at the, the Cape Methodist Church. Um, and so in, in the bulletin, we have a schedule of the remaining services and where, where they'll be at. Uh, they range from West Garboro to Peoples to back here, um, kinda, kinda all over the place. And uh, each week we have somebody from one of the different churches preach just to be able to, to, to get to know our churches a little better. Uh, and so that, that information's in the bulletin. Uh, another little bit of information uh, for the next two weeks, March 4th and the 11th, as we continue throughout our uh, spiritual discipline series, Pastor Shane Ross from the uh, South Portland Church of the Nazarene will be preaching. Uh, he'll be preaching on, I have it written there somewhere, Healthy Living and Justice for All. He'll talk about um, going from our works of piety and then he'll move into the works of mercy um, and that's because for the next couple of weeks, I will be out of town. I will be, uh, I'll be all over the place. Um, I fly out on Tuesday to go to Oklahoma City for a class, then a conference, and then I'll be in Kansas City for a day or two, and then I'll be in Tennessee giving a paper at a conference. Um, so if you would pray for me, that would be appreciated over the next few weeks. I think most of you remember how much I hate flying. Um, but it's, it's a necessary task, and as I uh, deliver this paper and as I, as I continue to connect with others. Um, but if you, if you do need me during these next two, two and a half weeks, uh, my phone will be on me at all times, 
And so unless I'm six miles above the ground, I will be responding to emails, text messages, and phone calls, um, and all, all the normal stuff. Lastly, um, during this, this month of February, we are doing our alabaster offering. We have our little church up here, and we've asked that um, as you've collected change, that you put it in these little boxes and, and that you, you bring them forward, and we, we will uh, take those and count them next week after everybody's um, brought, in, brought in their offering. But these are offerings that go to... Um, to help build buildings all around the world in the Nazarene Church. We have hospitals and orphanages and schools and churches that are being built from, these, um, from this money. I have friends that are currently worshiping in churches that have been built with these quarters and dimes and pennies that we bring in. Uh, and so thank you in advance for, for those offerings. If you would join me in our call to worship this morning, it's responsive and it's, it's based off of the 22nd Psalm. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. We come to worship this morning from different places. O oh God, do not be far from us. We come to worship this morning for different reasons. O oh God, do not be far from us. We experience the presence of the Spirit in different ways. O oh God, do not be far from us. We hear Jesus' words with different ears. O oh God, do not be far from us. Deny yourselves. O oh God, do not be far from us. Take up your cross. O oh God, do not be far from us. Follow me. O oh God, we thank you for drawing near to us in this place, in our lives. Amen. Come, let us continue in worship. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's worship God. Songs of praises, songs of praises. 
If you would join me in prayer this morning as we prepare to collect our tithes and our offerings. Almighty God, we are grateful that you gather us together. We are grateful that you allow us uh, technology that allows us to connect with people that are, that are unable to make it in today due to the snow or sickness or any other variables. We are glad that we can still be in community with one another. Lord, this morning we are, we are grateful that before we could gather here that you were already filling this place that your holy presence was already at work, preparing this place for our worship this morning. Lord, would you let us worship you boldly? Mm. Would you let us worship you in humility? Would you let us come before you, O oh God, and give thanks for who you are? Would you help us to enter into your mystery this morning. God, would you wrap us up in your being. God, lead us and guide us. God, this morning, I think of those that surround us, our neighbors. I think of the ways in which you are calling us to be a light to them, to be a light in what can be a sometimes dark world. So Lord, this morning, would you not only fill us up, but would you send us out to be poured out? We gather here for a multitude of reasons to worship you and to be prepared to better love our neighbors. And so, Lord, this morning, as we prepare to collect our tithes and our offerings, we pray that you would use them in a way that blesses our neighbors, that helps us to show your love to our neighbors. God, would you help us to be a generous people, a grateful people, a people who give both out of love and compassion, knowing that all that we have is truly yours to begin with, that we are mere stewards of it. So Lord, this morning, would you bless these, our gifts that we bring you? Would you use them to help us continue to work and build your kingdom here and now in this time and this place? Lord, would you bless the gift? Would you bless the giver? Would you help us to be faithful in all that we do? We ask this in your most holy name, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you join me this morning in praying our prayer of illumination as we, be, as we prepare to hear the scriptures read? Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your word 
and also do it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning. morning. Our first lesson is from Daniel, chapter 9, verses 17 through 19. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petition of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, O God, and hear, open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make request of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, listen. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hear and act. For your sake, O my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Amen. Amen. Our second lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. The parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded the others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of our Lord. Please stand together for our hymn this morning. Be 
seated. Our sermon text this morning is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter um, 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a little kid, I hated that passage. I would hear people say it, pray without ceasing, or never stop praying, or pray continually. And I was always like, well, how the heck am I supposed to do that? I've got stuff to do, people. And so I, I, would, hear, I would hear this chapter, or, this, or these verses, and I would always wonder, how is this possible? Who in the world can spend all day, every day praying? It just doesn't seem in all likelihood to be that possible to pray without ceasing. As I've got older and I went to college and seminary, I, I started to go to monasteries at different points. And there was times where I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe monks can, can do this. You know, monks are called to pray throughout the day. They gather together seven times a day to pray, and when they're in their cells, they pray. And I thought, maybe, maybe they could do it. In fact, the, the Benedictine monks, who are some of my favorites, their, uh, their motto for their society is ora et labora, prayer and work. That's what they do. They pray and they work. But I realize not all of us are called to monasticism. We have Monastery Road right down the road, but it doesn't even have a monastery on it. So I don't think any of us are going to be joining a local monastery anytime soon. We can't all live a monastic life, although I do think we could benefit from living more monastically. But as I've thought about this, I've thought, if Scripture calls us to it, if Paul says that Jesus, who is faithful, calls you to this, there must be a way for us to somehow do this. I don't think Paul would tell us that Jesus is calling us to this unless Paul really believed that we could somehow pray without ceasing. There's got to be some way of doing this. And as, as I've thought about that, there, there was a quote that came up this week that I thought just, just fit really well with kind of this idea of, of being in constant prayer but still living our lives. Uh, St. Teresa of Avila said this, Jacob did not cease to be a saint just because he had to attend his flocks. And I like that because Jacob was still able to do the duty that Jacob was called to do, to tend his sheep, to be their shepherd, but he was still a saint in the eyes of the church. And so I think one of the ways that we, can, that we can approach this text is to realize that there are, are different ways of praying. I wish I would have known that when I was a, a little kid. You see, growing up, I was taught that there was only one way to pray. You know, it was the, the acts prayer, adoration, confession. Although we normally skip, skip confession because growing up, Nazarenes were... You know, we believed in holiness, and so we didn't sin no more. Which, again, as I grew up, I came to found, find out that that was inaccurate as well. But we did adoration, sometimes confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. 
you know, basically I was taught, we, we talk about how good God is, and then we thank God, and then we, we kind of act like God's a cosmic ATM machine. That's redundant. I could just say ATM. We act like God's this cosmic ATM where, God, I need this. Thank you. God, I also need this. Thank you. God, could you do this? Thank you. And that was the only way that I was taught to pray. But as I've gotten older and as I've, I've experienced more of my faith, I've realized that there's, there's different ways that we pray, and people pray in different ways. And what I do as prayer may not be the most beneficial for you in prayer at times, and vice versa. Somebody that has really helped me to see this idea of prayer and being able to be in constant prayer or to pray without ceasing was a, uh, was a monk named Brother Lawrence who wrote Practicing the Presence of God. And so this monk realized that God was constantly with him, that God was as close to him while he was doing the dishes as, as God was when he was receiving the Eucharist in the chapel that while he was reading his scripture, God was as close to him then as God was when he was taking a bath. That God was always close with us. We just had to be aware of it. That God is as close to me right now as I'm preaching, as God is when I'm over at the assisted living home transporting clients around. That God is as close to me when I'm when I'm mounting an icon, as God is when I'm watching the newest episode of Criminal Minds, that God is constantly with us and we need to, to, to jump into that stream, if you will, to realize that God is continually surrounding us. Brother Lawrence in, in his book talks about the more that we practice this realization that God is continually around us, the easier it is for us to be in constant communication with God, for us to realize that even our little acts can be acts of prayer and that they can be done to the glory of God. In fact, I have a friend who he's now in Ohio, but we were in Kansas City for a time together where he used to always say that he believes that there will be a Coke worker in heaven, that there will be somebody working at a Coke factory because one of his friends has great joy in working for Coke. And he says, if heaven is the place where we are able to receive great joy and to do everything for the glory of God, then his friends should be able to make Coca-Cola for the glory of God in heaven. Kind of went on a tangent there. But that, that all these things we can do, that they can be done for the glory of God, that they can be done in an act of prayer, And so there are, there are many different ways to pray. And I, I think some of them we're more used to than others. And some of them I think we think of more as prayer than others. We have spontaneous prayers. Those prayers where we sit down and we pray, God, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you're doing. As I continue to make words come out of my mouth off the top of my head, you know, those spontaneous prayers where where we're just praying what we're feeling inside or, or what we're thinking. I think for most of us, those are probably the most common prayers that we know. For me, those are ones that I've done pretty much every day of my life, at least always before I go to bed. It was in, in uh, college that I realized that there were some prayers that were written, which is kind of shocking to me because there's at least one written prayer I knew since a little kid, the Lord's Prayer. That was written down. And so thanks to resources like the Book of Common Prayer or different uh, breveries or different prayer books, there are prayers that have been written down that help us to, to engage in prayer in a new way. I know for me, one of the prayer books I use, it often calls me to pray about things that I would not have thought to pray about otherwise. If I'm honest, I never think to pray about town hall until on Thursdays when the prayer book says, pray for your local government. Would have never thought about it. It doesn't cross my mind. 
there's one uh, prayer app that's on my phone that I'll occasionally use, and every day it lists a different denomination or a different church in which we can be praying for in remembrance that we are working towards the same general goal of spreading the gospel of, and love of Christ Jesus. And so there's, there's, different, there's different types of prayers. There's those that are, that are ancient and old and that have been prayed by many and many throughout the years. Then there are some that are more spontaneous. I had a friend ask me one day, he was like, why do you like written prayer so much? Why do you, why do you like them? And when I've told them that I think they're just well thought out and they're, they're deeply meaningful, and I'll often quote um, David Henry Thoreau, or Henry David Thoreau, whatever his name is, Thoreau, I'll quote him, where he says, all my best thoughts were stolen by the ancients. And I believe that, that a lot of these prayers are just better than ones that I could do, whether it be praying scripture, or whether that be praying from an ancient source um, such as the saints or the Book of Common Prayer or whatever, there's different ways to pray. And now some of these are, are better if you're more introverted or more quiet, if you, like, if you like being still, which there's a time for that. But then if you're like me, you can kind of struggle with that sometimes because you, you need to be moving, you need to be doing something. Uh, many of you have seen that my girlfriend Annie makes prayer beads um, as, as a tool to help people pray. And not only has she made prayer beads, she's made up a little card that she sends out with them. Because although there are, there are certain books that will give you certain prayers to pray throughout um, the different seasons, you know, and they're, they're, they're kind of repetitive, they're some people don't do too well with that, just saying the same things over and over again. She's made a card that, that has people pray them a little differently, where it has an opening prayer um, and a couple opening scriptures. But then as you go through each set of prayer or each set of beads, there's different things such as a set for praising God a set for confessing before God, a set for bringing our, concern, our concerns for ourselves and for others before God, and finally a set which again, we recall what we are thankful for. Or uh, yeah, yeah, I read that right. And so they're hope, they're, they are helpful, at least that I've seen different friends of mine who have got them, in finding a way to focus their prayers Plus, for me, I'm always doing something with my hands, and so it's nice to have something to move through my hands and to almost, to have that to see how far I, I've, I've been going and how far I've made it through the prayers. It gives us a physical act in praying, which many of the high liturgical church, I think they've got right. I know there's often a joke about the Catholic Church. You go to the you go to a mass and it's like going to the gym because you're up, down, kneel, up, down, kneel again, up, down, up, kneel, and you're just constantly moving. But I, I, I think there's great benefit in that that when we put our bodies into our prayers. I know there's been different times where if if I've gone and and sinned against God greatly and, and I've realized that that there's times where when I, when I pray, you know, it'll be a remover of my glasses and almost a covering of my face and coming before God and confessing. And you have that physical nature, that covering of your face almost. And then often when I, after I'm done praying, it, it's the removal of my hand from my face and just a thank you, Lord, with my hands out, almost as if I'm receiving. There's different times where if I've, if I've really wanted to be intentional in my prayers, where I've actually knelt down in front of um, an altar that I have at home, because it's a way to keep my body grounded with my mind. And so there, there's different ways of incorporating our bodies into prayer. 
Something else that I'll, I'll use frequently is, is similar to the prayer beads that Annie makes. Is it's, it, it goes by a few different names. Um, they're called a prayer rope. They're also called a chalk key is their, is their liturgical name. But basically, they're, they're just a rope that you can go through, and there's, there's prayers you pray with it. On the little knots, you pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And you just continually go through that in. And for me, it helps me to come to a place of quietness before God. It helps me to just focus on who God is. I also like the, uh, the story be behind these. It was said that, that there was a monk, St. Pacomius, who, who a way to help him pray, he would make knots in a rope in order for him to track his prayers and in order for him to pray the daily rule that he was given. But every time he would do it, as he was praying, the knots would become undone, and he would feel disheartened. And so one day, after the monk had prayed intensely, it says that an angel appeared to him and taught him how to make a certain type of knot that uses um, interlocked crosses and pulling, and that these knots would be unable to unravel. And it helped him to pray as vigorously as he needed to and keep concentrated on what he's praying instead of the knots falling apart. And part of that, part of the prayers that can be prayed with these, um, it's called the Jesus Prayer, the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's also used as what's known as a breath prayer, which is becoming more and more common in my life. Breath prayers are simple little prayers that you can pray while breathing. For many, it's on the inhale, it's Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, and on the exhale, have mercy on me, a sinner. And they're just simple things that you can do while walking. And, and because of praying these simple prayers, I've noticed just how deeply embedded in me they've become that there are times where if I'm walking in the store and I'm not really thinking about anything, I'll catch myself in my head just praying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Without thinking about it, just because I've gotten so used to praying that, to constantly be trying to be in the presence of God and to be in His mercy. And those are little prayers like that that we can pray. Um, there's different times where I get really anxious where just the little phrase, peace be with me. Christ says, peace be with me. I'll repeat it over and over in my head as it just brings me back into the acknowledgement that I am surrounded by God and that Christ has said, peace be with you. Another form of prayer that we don't really use here, but we use that the church I went to in Kansas City and that I, I, I think could be an interesting practice for us to do one day, is they had a set of candles off to the side. And any time during the service, somebody could get up and they could go light a prayer, or they could go light a candle. And that candle represented a prayer as the flames and, and the, the not smoke, but the vapor or whatever went up. To, went up. You, could, you could see the, the heat rising almost like the prayer is rising to heaven. And it was a symbol for those of us around to see this person has a prayer request or a praise. We can join them in that prayer without knowing what it is. But we're able to join together and you're able to see these prayers as the light of Christ, that as we give over our prayers to God, that the light of Christ is happening. And those are all more of the active different type of prayers, different ways that involve us doing different things, moving, lighting, uh, just ways of, of being engaged. There's some prayers, that I, I've mentioned this a few times, how extroverted I am, that I need people, that I need movement, I need stimulation around me. But it's been good for me over the last several, uh, several years to move into a more meditative and contemplative style of prayer as well. Where there's times where 
whether it be an image or a scripture verse or what be it, that I'll just take time and focus on it. And you can, you can start to see the way God is moving through things. There's different artwork that I'll sit out and I'll stare at and I walk away and somehow God has said something to me. I remember that especially with um, some of, um, uh, what's his name, Car- uh, Caravaggio, some of his artwork. There was one of St. Peter and there was another one of Judas kissing uh, Christ. And when you look at Peter and Judas, they look pretty similar. We have one that throughout church history has been considered kind of the, the greatest of the apostles and the other who was considered the least of the apostles. But here they look vastly similar. That time of just taking in what's around us. I often do that when I'm by the ocean as well. Uh, like a year ago, I, I wrote a blog in, in which I talked about how, how being by the ocean was such a meditative state for me because the ocean is so much bigger than I can imagine and it's so powerful, yet it's not overtaking me. And it reminded me of the ways that God is so much bigger than I could ever comprehend. But God invites us to participate in the life of God. One of the prayers that I probably struggle with the most is contemplation where, where you just sit in silence. That can be a hard one. Our world is so busy. There's constantly things bombarding us that it's hard to take time to just be silent before God. But it's during those times where I often feel like after I've done it that God has has spoken to me. I can't ever really say what God has spoken, but somehow God has has gotten into my soul and has has comforted me and said something. And sometimes I'll, I'll figure it out later. But I think whatever prayer is and however we use prayer, it has to again be more than just God as the cosmic ATM. Of course, there's nothing wrong with asking God for what we need. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, give us this day our daily bread. There's nothing wrong with asking for that which we need. But prayer is not mainly about asking for what we need. It's a tool that helps us to foster and build our relationship with God. It really wouldn't be much of a relationship if every time I talked to one of my parents, it was just, hey, I need this. Thank you. Hey, I need this as well. Thank you. If I didn't take time to get to know them and spend time with them, the relationship wouldn't be the same. So again, I I think when we do pray, in whatever way we pray, we need to, to look at it in two ways, as being one, contemplative, and two, active. St. Padre uh, Pio says this, He who does not meditate acts as one who never looks into the mirror, and so does not bother to put themselves in order, since they can be dirty without knowing it. The person who meditates and turns their thought to God, who is the mirror of the soul, seeks to know their defects and tries to correct them moderates themselves in their impulses and puts their conscience in order. And I believe that's true, that when we are silent before God, God can really reveal some things in us. But then there's, there's a West African proverb, which I also believe deeply. When you pray, move your feet. Meaning that not only can we ask for God to do justice in this world, that we have to step into that justice as well. It was in college where I read a quote that has stuck with me ever since. It said, there are times when I look up to God and say, God, why aren't you doing anything about the suffering children, about those that are hungry, about those that are cold, those that are naked, those that are in prison? To which God looked back at me and said, 
Why are you not doing anything about the children that are suffering, those that are cold, those that are hungry, and those that are in prison? It's a two-way street of both looking inwards and acting outwards. And lastly, I'll, I'll close this, this discussion on prayer with this. There's a, a quote by Soren Kierkegaard that I carry around in my wallet for this year. It's kind of been my, my quote of the year, if you will. Kierkegaard says this, The function of prayer is not to influence God, but rather to change the nature of the one who prays. And so again, it's, it's not wrong to pray in hopes that we influence God. But that's not the main task of it. The main task of it is that we would get in sync with God's will. That we would be shaped and conformed to the image of His Son for the sake of others. And so there's, there's a multitude of ways to pray. And I pray that as a church that we would try different ways but that as we try these different ways, we do it not solely for our own benefit, but so that we could be better images of Christ to the world around us. Would you pray with me this morning? God, would you help teach us to be a people of prayer, to come to you not only when we need something, but in every aspect, in every moment of our day. God, would you help us as your people to learn to really practice the presence of God well. That as we are out on the ocean catching lobsters, or as we are fixing a car, or as we're caring for the elderly that can't always take care of themselves, or as we're working and commuting to our jobs, God, would you help us to realize that you are in those moments. That as we travel up and down the highway, that you are sitting in the car with us. That as we sit down for dinner, you are there sitting beside us at the table. That as we go about and do whatever it is that we do for fun, that you are cheering us on. That even when we are just relaxing and watching the next episode of the latest Netflix show, you are there with us. God, would you help us to be a people that realize that you are constantly around us and that we are constantly in your grace and in your mercy. God, help us to move with you, to journey with you, to be led by your Spirit. During this season of Lent, we especially think of where your Spirit led Christ and how your Spirit did not leave him. God, would you lead us to where you need us to be? And would you remind us that you are constantly with us? And so, Lord, we pray these things in your holy and precious name, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So normally we would do a song at this point, but really it's just a time of response after the sermon. And so this week, uh, one of my friends out in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, wrote a, um, a litany or a, a give and take a, a responsive reading, a responsive prayer for the Lenten season. And so basically with the litanies, what they are is um, I will make a petition and then a, a response is given. And it's, an, it's a way for us to pray together, to pray in community, for us to pray in one voice. And so before we come to the table and, and before we confess and receive pardon and receive peace, we will we'll pray together and they'll be on the screen. Lord, our God, we ask for peace in all the world, for the welfare and unity of your holy church and for harmony between all peoples. We need you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
be with and strengthen our district superintendent, Dr. Dillman, and give your grace to all clergy that they may boldly proclaim your truth and faithfully administer the sacraments. We need you, Lord, have mercy. Bless and guide the leaders of all nations and all in authority that they may lead in wisdom, truth, and righteousness. We need you, Lord, Lord have mercy. We ask you, God, of all creation, for a seasonable weather, as we look outside to the snow right now, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth. We need you, Lord, Lord have mercy. Thank you for the good earth which you have given to us. Grant us the wisdom and will to conserve it. We need you, Lord, Lord have mercy. Give your mercy and peace to the aged and infirm, to the widowed and the orphan, and to the sick and the suffering. We need you, Lord, have mercy. Uplift and set free the poor and the oppressed, the unemployed, the underemployed, and the destitute, the prisoners and the captives. Empower with your love and care all who remember and serve them. We need you. Lord, have mercy. May all who have died rest in peace and rise in glory. We need you, Lord, have mercy. May this congregation truly reflect your goodness and love. We need you, Lord, have mercy. I mentioned earlier that written prayers sometimes remind me to pray for things that I don't normally think of. One of the lines in there was uh, for God to be with the leaders of all nations. If I'm honest, I normally don't think about the leaders of Canada or Ghana or Australia or China, but these prayers remind me that I am to pray even for them, that I am to pray for more than just my own backyard. I work with the elderly and I often forget that I'm to pray for them, but this reminds me to pray for them. And so there's a lot of benefits in these types of prayers, I believe, as they, they call us to think outside of our normal uh, sphere. Another thing I think these prayers do is I think they help to teach us to be in unity. When we started, not everybody was saying the, um, we need you, Lord have mercy, at the same uh, pace. But as we continued to pray together, we began to be on pace with one another. Praying with each other helps us to be on pace in our lives together. But would you pray with me this morning uh, be, before we come to the table? Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 it says, Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Oh, that you would choose life, that you and your descendants might live. God has set before us life and death. The choice is ours. Let us acknowledge our misuse of the liberty of choice. Let us pray and confess our sins to God the Almighty and all merciful. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Hear this, the assurance of good news. Repent and believe the gospel. For you are forgiven. You are forgiven indeed. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you this morning.
as we prepare to come to the table. And may it always be so. May the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. Teach us to pray, to journey alongside you as we go through our lives. And so with your people on earth, and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He taught us to pray, to be contemplative and active, to have silent prayer and moving with our feet prayers. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you, O Lord, would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you, O Lord, gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery of sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. So on the night on which he gave himself up for us, Christ took the bread, he gave thanks over it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples telling them, take this and eat. This is my body which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, that night when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks over it. He gave it to his disciples. He told them, take this and drink, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant which has been poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery that is our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. For we are called to be saints and to bring the world to Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ. Make us one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, both now and forever. Now with the confidence of the children of God, would you pray with me that which Christ our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and we are not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During the season of Lent, we'll be uh, continuing to partake in the Eucharist through means of intinction. And part of it is that it reminds us that we are one body, and that we are drinking from one cup, or that we are receiving from one cup, that we are one, especially during this Lenten season where many of us are fasting from different things, and it's an intentional spiritual journey. It reminds us that we need one another, that in Christ we are called to be with one another. And so as you are ready, come and receive the grace of God for the people of God. The table is ready. Come and receive.
body and the blood of Christ has been broken and shed for us. May we receive his grace and live into it. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May our lives be prayers unto you. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us find strength in prayer and use it to praise God because he's worthy today. Let's all stand together and sing our hymn of sending. Receive this benediction as you go. Lord, make us a people of prayer, a people who look inwards at ourselves, people who look out at our neighbors, and people who look to you. May we be shaped and formed into the people of prayer that you so long for us to be. Go in grace and peace to love and serve the Lord and neighbor. You are dismissed.